fear. That's their tools, fraud, force, and fear. Fraudism. Now, one of the things was asked on me, why, why is, is fraudism here? Why do we deal with fraudism? What is the purpose of fraudism? The reason they promote fraudism is that they truly believe themselves to be messiahs. They absolutely believe themselves to be God. And what are their processes designed to do? Fanaticism. That is what they train people to be. That is why the frustration of all of you dealing with the frontline officials. Because why? They're trained in the mind of fanatics. But this is the absurdity of fraudism. Remember the fall of communism. And prior to the fall of communism, people were told that the Soviet Union had secret and advanced programs. It had its own Star Wars. It had its own programs. It was only when the wall finally came down, it was revealed that it was all a lie. It was paper mache. It, it was rusted steel. There was nothing. Exactly the same as the weapons of mass destruction. I remember seeing Colin Powell sitting there in the uh, UN Security Council, flat stick lying to the world, absolutely lying, that they knew that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. New. But of course, when I went into Iraq and found that it was a third world country, just surviving. Now, one of the classic examples of how the elite still maintain power through fraud, force and fear is some research I'm doing with cognitive law. And that is into the era of Influence. How do they influence us? How do they try to influence us? And you've all probably heard the word mind control. Well, I've been reading lots and lots and lots of history books and material on mind control to see the truth of this. And I can now say to you categorically that the most important element of mind control is a term. Because if you believe that mind control is possible, um, have you lost audio, people? Can, can you type in? Is audio still there? Just got a message that audio went down. Can you, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, I'm back on. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, good. Um, so what we're saying is that if you consider the word mind control and consider all this elaborate work that's been done on the monarch and all these programs, I have no doubt that the Illuminati absolutely want absolutely want us to believe uh, that they have these amazing programs and that they have programmed millions and millions of slaves through mind control. But I say to you that the essence of mind control, the key principle of mind control is this. If you believe mind control is possible, then you believe that they can defeat free will. In other words, you believe their arrogance that they can defeat the divine creator. They can defeat God that they themselves are gods. That's the essential underlying principle assumption of mind control. So the belief that mind control is possible is what they want to promote. And much of what you read, much of what you read is more, yet more disinfo 
because they would like you to believe that they have been extraordinarily successful in their mind control operations. Now, just how naked is the emperor? Just how ill, sick, stupid, deluded, incompetent is the emperor? Let's have a look at psychology. Next year, they are planning to effectively make us all mental patients, all of us, because there will be a disorder for pretty much every single action you deal with when you go outside the door. In fact, if you have any sign of free thinking, you have a disorder. Now, they're very careful to call it a disorder or a symptom. They don't call it a disease. And the reason I call it a disease is that after all this time, there is not one single shred of evidence that any disease of the mind exists. There's plenty of evidence of biological disease, plenty. And medicine has shown many examples of prediction of disease. One might argue that they don't like revealing cures, and that's for another audio. But certainly at this point, if we look to medical science, when we are talking about disease, there are clear parameters and rules for identifying disease. Not one, not one of the hundreds of disorders and syndromes vomited, excreted by psychologists, not one of them can be shown to be a valid disease. There is no evidence of disease of the mind. In fact, the most powerful thing is the auto-suggestion and the self-fulfillment of classifying. If you call something a disorder and if people believe you, if you believe it's true, then the power of the mind makes it so. If you believe it's true, then they win because that fulfills the belief. If you believe something, the mind focuses on making it come true. They want you to believe that mind control is real. They want you to believe that they are masters of technology. They want you to believe that they are all united and all powerful and that everything that's happening is part of some grand plan. Well, it's not part of some grand plan. They are extraordinarily incompetent. They are drug addicted. They are lazy. They are stupid. And about the only thing they have left is to try and keep believe, getting you to believe in their lies. Well, to help us and to help others, I have made sure, and, and with your help and many of your help, making sure that when it comes to the canons of law and the cognitive law, that we ensure the canons are to the highest standard and that the cognitive law exposes these lies and these frauds once and for all. Well, we've covered a number of subjects. Uh, I know I've got annoyed on a few subjects there. <laughs> um, I know we've had technical issues tonight. Uh, so it's been challenging on many fronts. I want to thank you all for listening. And now what I'm going to try and do is I see that there are a queue of people who have uh, lit up there. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can uh, unmute uh, those that are in the queue. Um, so I'm going to start and thank you. And I'm going to, um, fingers crossed, see if we can um, uh, un, uh, unmute. So I'm going to start with um, uh, uh, Truth Matters to Me. So uh, Truth Matters to Me, you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Hello, Truth Matters to Me. Can you, can you hear? Hi. Yes, hi. Hi. Well, 
It's star eight. <laughs> this is Greg. Hi, <laughs> Greg. Hey, I, I'm I'm wonderful. I, I Frank, I I, uh, I don't have a question right off the bat, but I got to tell you something. What you have done is the fulfillment of my life. <laughs> I feel like I've accomplished something now. I didn't do anything. It was all you. <laughs> uh, I, I thank you. That's right. No, I just I just can't, I I I'm shaking. I I'm actually was sitting in an auditorium at my son's senior. He's a senior at a high school in in. Uh, Northern Idaho, and uh, listening to his last orchestra concert, and listening to the, listening to you speak those wonderful words at the same time. Um, I, I I have to I just my whole life has been looking for the answers to how this thing was done. I knew before even during when I was in seminary that uh, that the concept of debt, sin, transgression, trespass, and iniquities was commercial. It had nothing to do with me being good or bad. It had to do with a system they'd set up, and what you've yep. done is confirm that in droves more ways than I ever could have imagined. But I just want to thank you. Uh, you call yourself a scribe, so I'm going, to call, I'm going to thank you for being the scribe of the divine creator and passing this on to us because um, I am so blessed. I, I'm, I'm soaring right now. I feel like I'm in euphoria with knowing the truth. And, uh, you know, if there's only a few of us that know this and come to this right now, um, so be it. But uh, I know you're telling the truth, and I would just like to give my confirmation and just for the record, my, my, I've done radio for 15 years. My, my name is Greg Pappas, and uh, um, I've been looking for this answer ever since I started doing radio back in 1995 and to put out what I could of the truth. And uh, I stopped doing radio last fall, uh, actually when I got onto your calls in November, and I was asked to keep doing interviews, and I told the men that I could no longer do interviews and because I was studying with the man that was giving me the answers. So how could I tell people what the answers were when I was still learning them. And um, I just I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done. Uh, That's right. You are well, the great... <laughs> well, I hope, I hope you do get back to, to interviews, and I hope that you, and I trust that you embrace the information as a, as a fulfillment of your knowledge, and I hope yeah. and trust that you will see that this is part of you, and I hope over time that when people come to it, that they too go through the same experience through you so that the information has a life of its own separate to me. I appreciate your kind words. Well, um, it's not going to stop. I will, keep, I will keep teaching it, and I, will, and I will teach it to people to teach it also. And the truths are so complete. I mean, the, the puzzle is just so completely put together. I was looking at a thousand-piece puzzle on a desk at a library yesterday, and what you've done is you've taken a, a million-piece puzzle and put it together for everybody to see. It's just remarkable. Thank you so much. And, uh, Good on you, you have, uh, Thank you. You have all of our, our love and appreciation. Thank you, Frank. Good on you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, thanks for that, Greg. Now, I'm going to go to Alpha 999. And uh, fingers crossed. Here we go. Frank. Oh, I got you there. How Frank, are you? Frank, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, Good. I talked to, actually talked to you last week, um, and I had my court uh, this week, and I, I did review all your uh, um, information on how to succeed at court. I think the most important thing that I read in there is behaving with respect and honor and respect and honor before the court. I really took that to heart, and I, I, I must say, I just got such a positive result from the judge. He was he was just amazed. Uh, that the way I behaved and how I, the things that I said, and I got everything I asked for. Um, but it was a, obviously it was a respectful and a, a fairly. I was there for a while watching him, and he was. There are people out there. Are people in the justice system that uh, you know take their job seriously and think they're doing the right thing. Yes. And I think I think this judge was one of them. I was just going to add further to that uh, the first caller's comments. I, I agree. Like I myself have uh, throughout my throughout my life, you know that this is all wrong. You know this is bizarre, and you know it's all wrong. And you you, you know you try to. You, so far in my life, I try to work within this bizarre arrangement that's in place in the world. And then you sort of, you've got most of yourself. Most people are you know have goodness in them. Yes, and, I uh, You know. But they're being sort of blocked by this arrangement, and um, 
by getting this information and reviewing what I've reviewed 